All right. Hearth fire. And right beneath it, kind of a twin. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I don't know if, if you can see that or not. I'm having a battery. Um, holy. Uh, eight of wands, six of wands. Hearth fire. These are at the bottom of the deck. Hearth fire is about family, kith, kin, um, everything centered around the fireplace, right? Perfect time of year for that. And we have the harvest. So that's our Thanksgiving. So a lot of you guys are, are family issues, love issues, reaping what you've sown, bringing in that harvest time. And oh my gosh, look at this one too. We got celebration. Holy crap. Celebration. You guys are having such a fun time with Thanksgiving. Fun. Breath of life. This is a new idea, a new thought, a new communication coming in. Something is moving. Something's coming in fast for you. And I have a feeling that you're going to like it because our next card here, we've got fulfillment. Three of Wands is something passionate. This is about uh, if you've had any medical issues, this is about healing. Uh, if you have launched a project, this is about something coming in. Uh, your ships are coming in. They're on the way. This is about all kinds of wonderful things. Three is such a solid foundational number, right? Um, there's a lot of cards in here that indicate that some of you single cancers um, may be experiencing a relationship that's been coming up. We'll have to see kind of how that plays out, right? Um, we do have coming up here the Hermit card. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. Uh, with the winter, that's kind of the way that it goes. And this card has associations with the Feast of St. Stephen, who's in December. So <clears throat> this card is about going within. It's about taking time to yourself, wisdom, studying, learning things, um, following your own path and, and being alone, being single until you absolutely meet the person that you don't want to be single anymore um, for. But this is all about new beginnings right? Figuring out who you are and where you want to go. Like, let's look at this next. The Two of Cups attraction. It could be that that's what's breathing some new life into you. There's an attraction that you're having for somebody else. And Two of Cups is a great harbinger, 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 whatever. Um, but it's a love. It's about you fill up your cup, somebody fills up their cup, both of you filling up each other's cup. This is soulmate attraction, right? Romance. Passionate, loving, romance. Beautiful card. Uh, I want to point out as well the Page of Cups that we have coming in. Kingfisher, this is about new offer of love. And it ties right back with our Two of Cups and our passion uh, in the Ace of Arrows, our new communication coming in. Both the Page of Cups and the Ace of Arrows are communication coming in. This is a tangible offer of something this Kingfisher's offering love. And the legend of the Kingfisher is about someone who loved his woman so much uh, that he did not want to let her go, uh, even though there was parental pressure to avoid that. But this attraction here, the soulmate relationship, happy joy in love, lots of joy in love. This son, wish fulfillment, happiest card in the deck, bright, sunshine, um, manifestation, uh, birth of something new, uh, lots of energy, masculine energy. In fact, we've got this King of uh, Wands here. And King of Wands, Adder, this is another good symbol of healing, although this can be something of a dominant struggle. But this is about a fire sign, like an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius coming in. We see double with the Leo because the Sun card is the planetary ruler. The sun is the planetary ruler of Leo. And then our three of wands card with the fulfillment. And again, we got the double caduceus. So people with healing issues, you're going to be feeling so much better. Try not to overstuff though with the bird. Uh, but this energy here, again, we've got this, this powerful fire energy coming in. This is passion. This is hot sex. I am envious. Okay. I may or may not be kidding. I'm going to let you fill in that blank. Then we have the waters of life represented by our Ace of Cups. So we have the Two of Cups attraction. We've got the Ace of Cups and the Waters of Life. Ace of Cups is filling your own cup up first and then allowing it to overflow and to spill over and benefit someone else. These guys are filling up each other's cup, but they're filling up each other, their self first. It's always necessary for the healthiest relationships to be sure that you're taking care of numero uno, right? Numero uno. Um, 
Ace of Cups is about the beginning of a new love coming in. This also ties in with the Page of Cups. So if you have been wanting a new romantic relationship, this is the reading you've been waiting for. Even Nine of Arrows here, we've got the Dedication card. Nine of Arrows, Air Sign. This is someone playing a musical, or excuse me, playing the bow and arrow like a musical instrument. This is about dedicating yourself to a higher purpose. Now, we saw this attraction energy and this getting together with your king of wands doesn't have to literally be a fire sign, but it's somebody operating in that energy. Lots of joy, lots of love, satisfaction, fulfillment, what you've been wanting coming in. Even though we do see the hermit card and the waters of life, which could be about self-care and self-love coming in and dedication, making sure that it's what you want. I think some of you, in spite of your excitement about this person, may be very careful to, to go slow. Make sure that it's actually what you want and that you're not losing yourself in the we of it all. And that's a very, very important, very smart, smart thing to be. But basically, and we can tie this all back here, we've got this this energy of home and hearth fire. For those of you that may be finding new love, you've already got family. You have family, you have a feast coming, and you've got a celebration of that. And you are putting your family and yourself first, and this new relationship may have to, um, not that you don't care, but it, to the contrary, but it does mean that you're not willing to, um, to forego your family festivals and your family relationships just because somebody new is coming in. You are putting yourself and your family first. And this indicates the learning of a karmic lesson. The learning of a karmic lesson, self-care, self-love, putting yourself first, and knowing that the right one for you, the right people for you, friends, um, the right lover for you, those individuals are going to be happy that you're putting yourself first because they're going to want you to be happy and fulfilled entirely. And they're not going to want the stress of having to complete 100% of your self-satisfaction. It's an impossible task to do. The healthiest relationships are when two individuals come together as individuals to share uh, and to walk alongside one another in that journey, going in a common direction. But if you don't know where you want to go, that's what happens. Uh, we get codependent with people. We, we get off of our own path. We no longer take care of ourselves. We no longer put our needs uh, first into that. And that's where uh, codependency and um, unhealthy relationships and an unhealthy physical body and, and all that kind of uh, cluster, let's just say, comes in. So very definitely, you cancers are coming from a great place, a great place. Letting go of codependency issues and being able to say, what is in my best interest right now and to what extent? Uh, falling in love with somebody doesn't mean that they can all consume you. It simply means uh, that you're allowing someone to share in parts of your life to the extent that you feel comfortable going slow, pacing yourself, and not forgetting that you were born to this earth for a higher purpose. And that relationship is not why you were born, but yet it's something that can uh, give your life added benefit and comfort even as you are... Um, doing what it actually was that you were here to be the best accountant th that you can be to be the best spiritual healer or advisor that you can be to be the best therapist you can be or to be the best mom that you can be or whatever your life goal or your your purpose for being um <clears throat> was so i am shuffling right now um, our animal wise tarot and um i would like to oh we had a roller so um I'm going to put that back because I'm not feeling it right now because unfortunately I'm having like two or three or four cards pop out at a time. So let me keep going. But I'm working right now uh, shuffling the Animal Wise Tarot. It's a nice supplement. I do apologize if earlier in the tape there was a, uh, or the recording, there was a, a glitch. I had a low battery cue. So this will be my last reading until I plug in for a while. So I'm going to have, oh, I was going to say, man, I'm going to have to cut these cards. All right. So this is the uh, Animal Tarot deck, Animal Wise Tarot deck by Teddy Andrews. This is another deck I've had for a good long time. And the card that fell out is the Wheel of Fortune, which is the 10 of the major Arcana cards, meaning it's about spiritual growth and development. 
And this card is Bear, heeding inner voice and cycles. Bear, te oh man, Bear teaches us, see this reminds me right now of this Hermit card. Golly. Uh, Bear teaches us to follow our inner voice and to follow a new and more natural rhythm. They teach us that there is a rhythm and flow to everything. And when we align with it, we are much less frustrated and more successful. In the late fall and early winter, just like now, bears withdraw from outer activity. They go into their den, utilizing a heavy sleep, living off of stored body fat. During the winter, the mother bear gives birth to her young, usually two or sometimes three cubs. In the spring, the cubs are brought out into the open. The cubs usually remain with the mother bear for up to two years before going off on their own. If bear has walked into our life, we need to focus on a new rhythm. As late fall and early winter approaches, slow down the outer activities. Through the winter, focus on two, maybe three projects. In the spring, bring those projects out into the open, but look for those projects to take at least two years before they mature and take off on their own for you. The bear is a symbol of the subconscious and the need to heed the inner voice and our own inner rhythms. Do not try and do things in the time and manner that others may do them. Trust your own rhythms. Follow the bear's guidance. Bears teach us, through the example of giving birth in the den in the winter, to go within ourselves and awaken the potential sleeping there. They remind us to bring what we awaken into the outer world. They teach us that a new cycle is at play within our life. For the greatest success, we must adapt to that new cycle. The wheels are turning anew for us. It is time to change our patterns. All bears have a fondness for honey, a symbol of the natural sweetness of life. When bear wanders in, it is a reminder that our innate potentials are awakening, but only by bringing them out and expressing them in a new rhythm will we taste the honey of life. Questions to ask. Is your judgment off? This, this is if you're feeling like you're not quite walking in bear energy right now. Questions to ask. Is your judgment off? Are you not heeding your own instincts? Are you not recognizing what is beneficial within your life? Taking time to enjoy the honey. Are you being too critical or are others around you being so? Such great lessons of wisdom from Bear. This hermit tells us just like the bear, we're going in during this Feast of St. Stephen this December to kind of figure out what it is that we want to give birth to in the coming months. The waters of life is very much about something that we uh, we love, that we feel spiritually connected to, a new project, a new goal, a new vision for the next two years of our life, and dedicating ourselves to that purpose. What is it that you want to do when you don't worry about bills? That's That's about taking this type of energy and figuring out what exactly that's going to be for you, because there's real joy and real happiness in that. You could be the sunshine in other people's lives, depending on connecting with whatever that service is, that product, that good, uh, whatever that type of work that you are doing. Um, one of the best things we can do for ourselves is to identify what our spiritual purpose is, to find a work that makes us feel joyful and happy in doing it. Uh, that's when we know that we're resonating with our true purpose in our best self. Um, that is how we can, can shed some light into the darkness and discover what it is that we really, really want to be doing, what resonates for us. So bear that in mind. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to pun on the word bear, but here it is, bear, bear with us in mind. And um, you may find yourself having an amazing spring and summer coming up because you have a renewed vision for what you need to do. Even if you already love what you're doing, this could be about the time of taking it to the next level, identifying the steps, identifying the things that you want to do to be able to take it to that next level. Well, with that, I will stop. I don't want to... Um, I, I think that's plenty at this point for this reading. Uh, it felt really, really good. Like it was resonating in here uh, from a spiritual source level. And um, I hope that you feel the same way about that. I ho hope that this helps to bring some um, enlightenment.